ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, boom! Hello and welcome back to Still We Persist. My name is Sienna Kasky. I use she and her pronouns and I am the AYA Women of Color Initiative Leadership Liaison. And hello everyone, my name is Tamara. I use she and her pronouns and I'm the AYA Graduate Assistant. As we always do in our videos, we're gonna start, start this episode off with a land acknowledgement. Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River or Ampanefu Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are a part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Select Indians. Thank you. So, if you can see, there's no one here with us today, what? but <laughs> we've been doing this thing called hashtag Ask Aya on our Instagram series, or Instagram um, platform, and we listen to y'all, and today's topic will be on self-love. And so, I think when Tamara and I initially saw the Instagram saying, like, <laughs> talk about self-love, we were like, ooh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're... We want to acknowledge that like, we are not perfect in this. Like, we don't mm -hmm. have um, a self-love practice that is for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think right now we're just gonna go into how we define self-love for ourselves. So yeah. do you wanna start yeah, first? I can try. I think like going back to what you said, I don't think I'm doing self-love well. Like I don't think I'm doing it well right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, struggling to define like what it is for myself mm -hmm. but like I like to think of when I'm self-loving I am comfortable mm -hmm. like with me like I feel like I'm not having to cover pieces of myself mm -hmm. like for myself do you mm -hmm. know what I mean like mm -hmm. do you understand that like I am not pretending that I'm not sad and like masking it not only for other people but like Sometimes I'll mask my sadness for myself. Mm -hmm. And so like when I'm being self-loving, I'm like allowing that to kind of bubble to the surface. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I'm just like jumping in it. But like maybe the reason why I'm not doing well in my self-love right now is because I'm not allowing myself to fully feel like the authentic mm -hmm. feelings within me mm -hmm. because I'm feeling like I have to perform for the world around me. Mm -hmm. So like do classes, do work, do like other work. Like <laughs> yeah. there's a lot happening where I don't, I'm feeling like I don't have the space to mm -hmm. self love mm -hmm. um, or like engage in a self love practice because I also like just want to love the people around me. Right, I, f I really resonate with a lot of what you're saying because I feel that too mm -hmm. right now, but in, in different ways. Um, I think like my self love practice has definitely changed over the years and I've been thinking a lot about especially like this term about my childhood mm. and my relationships with my family mm -hmm. and how that has shaped me into who I am today and it's not a pretty process <laughs> at all um, mm. but it's also beautiful at this in the same way um, I think growing up for me I struggled a lot with body image mm. and that was my really big thing from when I was um, in the second grade I remember I remember distinctly the second grade to about I mean it still happens now but I think really until I graduated high school so from like that age like that time frame of being a small young little brown girl in white schools to being an 18 year old in white schools mm. I didn't like what I looked like at all. Mm -hmm. And that impacted how I moved about the world and how I interacted with other people. And that was really, really difficult. And I think I didn't understand what self-love was. I didn't mm -hmm. know how to love myself because in my, I didn't see women in my family loving themselves. Mm -hmm. I didn't see men or other folks in my family yeah. loving themselves. Mm -hmm. And so if you have people that are around you that are supporting you and they don't show you mm -hmm. how they care for themselves, it's really hard for you to care for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I was growing up in. And I think I always felt like 
in my classes growing up, especially in like fourth, fifth grade, I felt like I had to overperform my ethnicity and like really see myself as the stereotypical Latina mm. because that's how my peers saw me. And mm -hmm. so I was like, well, if that's how they see me and they're not gonna see me for who I am, then I'll just perform to their stereotype. Yeah. And looking back on that, I wish I could go back and like shake myself and be like, stop doing that because that's so unhealthy and because that followed me up until college. Mm -hmm. And that's how I interacted with um, and like sexual relationships because that was really hard and being really fetishized. And so mm -hmm. I saw that the only way that other people would love me was by performing to this awful over sexual mm -hmm. Latina. And that got me into some really bad situations. Yeah. Um, I don't regret anything that I've done, but I learned from them. Mm -hmm. And I think moving from being engulfed in a stereotype to where I am now, I'm really happy where I am now. Because I think I'm finally getting the handle of loving myself. Mm. Something that you brought up is like this concept of body image. And so for me, I'm like, wondering how would you define mm. body image because yeah. like I I think of like what's connected to my body and I'm like okay so can body image like encompass like my hair and mm. also my weight and mm -hmm. like what I put on it yeah like what so what would yeah. that be for you I think for me it's my entire like exterior mm. so it's it's coming from a pimple I had on my face mm -hmm. or the way that my weight fluctuates or like my chubbiness in my face. Like it's mm -hmm. everything that doesn't fit Eurocentric beauty standards. Mm -hmm. um, and I like body image is, is hard because literally everybody has a different body. Mm -hmm. No one will ever look the same. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so rude of society <laughs> to put that on us, yeah. especially for people that you know we have a little more weight on our butt and mm -hmm. we have a little more curvy nuts mm -hmm. to our yeah. body <laughs> which like we can't be can't stick figures like i can't yeah. do it like that's, that's just what it. my ancestors gave me i'm sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but i didn't know that i didn't know that was a thing back in the day but mm -hmm. like now i think about like rihanna and her savage fenty lingerie line it. yeah she's so it's she's awesome mm -hmm. um and i it was the first time that i saw black and brown femmes, mm -hmm. no Photoshop, like in their full beautiful bodies. And I think, I was like, wow, I wonder how that's gonna impact the fourth grade little oh girl yeah. who's like, I can't fit into this double zero gene and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited for body image to change. Mm. But I think back in the day, like it was, it was so hard, especially when we would get made fun of for big lips, mm -hmm. and which is now popular. Which I'm a little like fresh. I mean, I'm happy. The lip filler. <laughs> yeah, which is frustrating because yeah. I remember I would get made fun of, like, "Oh, your bottom lip is so big," and I'm like, "I don't even have that big of lips," but okay. Yeah. But yeah. it was just because I didn't fit the Eurocentric beauty model, mm -hmm. and so I think that's how I would define body image, um, is kind of like how you see yourself fully on the mm. exterior yeah and sometimes that's impacted by our society's values mm -hmm. what about you yeah yeah I think I would I resonate with that a lot because I think a lot of where like my like potential to self-love and like not self-loving like butt up against each other but mm -hmm. like as I talked about previously a lot of this like for me manifests in my hair mm -hmm. so like I think about the ways in which when I was like elementary school to a good chunk literally all the way up until my freshman year of college I think maybe mm. even like my sophomore year of college like would straighten my hair like no other like as a means to get into this like my one way into a Eurocentric like beauty mm. standard as a one way in for me to see myself like fitting in mm -hmm. and like to love myself because I didn't know like like I just didn't know what to do with this yeah. um and like it was stressful AF mm -hmm. and I literally like like my hair was so not well mm -hmm. like it was so not well and I would pay so much money to like have it straightened like chemically straightened and just to like 
erase, like it was me trying to erase myself in an effort to create something new of like what I thought other people wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that also had to do with like the circles I was like putting myself in, like the community or like friendship circles I was placing myself within. And as much as I think those people, like, in some capacity, I do think they wanted me to love myself. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't love myself in a space where I didn't see myself. Yeah. Like, all of my friends, like, I was in a white sorority. Like, all of the people I was surrounded with, like, didn't look like me. And even, like, the people that did, like, black people are told that our hair is not okay. And, like, our hair is not professional. Mm -hmm. And it's not pretty. And Mm -hmm. it's not whatever. So, like... There's black women, like, out there straightening our hair. Like, we have weaves. Like, we have whatever. And, and, like, a lot of that, I think, is, again, reflected of, like, this Eurocentric Mm -hmm. ideal of, like, what beauty is, Mm -hmm. um, what is lovable. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when I don't see myself reflected in, like, what is lovable, like, that Mm -hmm. made me really, made it really hard for me to be authentically, like, true to myself. You kind of just made me, like, (laughs) 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 the lovable aspect mm. is real. Yeah, because, like, how do I self-love if I feel like other people can't love me? Yeah. Like, what do I do? I <laughs> like, what do you do in that I sense? I think it's definitely, like, self-love has changed for me, especially, mm-hmm. I think, like, middle of last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was really revisiting a lot of past body trauma that happened to me my freshman year of college Mm -hmm. um, which made me really feel unlovable Mm -hmm. and unwanted and I think oh oh, I'm getting emotional (laughs) Um, and I think recognizing that I can't expect others to love me the way that I want to be loved. Mm. And so I took that upon myself and I was like, Sienna, you can't keep doing this to yourself. You can't keep thinking that no one is ever going to want you. Wow, that sounds really sad. But I think that was my mentality. And I was like, I'm going to change this because I, if, no one's gonna no one's gonna fix this for you. Mm -hmm. No one's gonna answer the questions that you have for yourself. And so I was on an intentional self-love journey Mm. and I I would journal about it really frequently I would Mm. think about how I was like pleasuring myself and Mm. I am Adrian Marie Brown who is one of my favorite authors um, wrote this book on pleasure activism that I finished last summer and that really helped me understand Mm. like how to love myself through being a change maker and being an organizer and trying to get other people in my life to love themselves because I think that's a really big part of my work and a part of it is affirming others Mm -hmm. because as much as I I love my mom and my parents but like whenever they say like I love you you're beautiful I never heard it Mm. because it's almost like you're my parents you're supposed to say that but other people don't have parents telling them that anyways and I've noticed that and so Mm -hmm. I took I was like I need to affirm others and by letting other people know like the beauty I see in them helped me to see the beauty in myself. Mm. Because I was like, if you can say that to other people, you can say that about yourself. Mm -hmm. And so like I would literally go up to the mirrors after I would get ready and I'd be like, Sienna, you're beautiful. You are killing it. Mm -hmm. Like, I like this. I like how you you looking a little thick today. Like that's (laughs) that's okay. And that's cool. And so I just had to affirm myself because I knew that no one else would Mm. in the ways that I wanted. And I think self-love for me is about, it's not necessarily about my exterior Mm self-love. It's more about how my soul and my energy Mm. can feel full. Mm -hmm. Because if those two things don't feel full, I'm extremely unbalanced Mm -hmm. and I get into toxic um, habits like sleeping super late not feeding myself, Mm -hmm. not sweating, not working out, just sweating. Like, I just need to sweat sometimes, (laughs) you know, like, because I'm not, and that's something like I Mm -hmm. struggled with because I would go to the gym almost every day to try and Mm -hmm. look thinner or toner or have a bigger butt or Mm -hmm. something because that's super in now too, which feels weird. Like, we can talk about that later, but, and like having really unhealthy eating habits. Mm -hmm. And so now I eat whatever I want. 
and like that's been that's been really big for me yeah. eating whatever I want yeah when I want it mm. you like touched on so many beautiful things and like tough things that I, they're all just like swirling around in my head I'm like how do I just pick one because I feel like I'm just resonating so hard with everything you're saying and just I'm there needs to be more conversations about the way like external things like then impact your psyche and like mm -hmm. your internal like mental mm -hmm. well-being and so like where do we have the mental capacity to like self-love mm -hmm. like how are we building up like mental capacity and stamina to love ourselves or like refill our cups yeah. when they're like being empty in certain spaces and so I think about like how what practices am I doing to like mm -hmm. engage in that mm -hmm. and a lot of that comes back to like the times that I get to spend with myself like yeah. I am a super introverted person like at heart like I am so introverted and like the time where I get to sit with myself mm -hmm. and like journal or like mindlessly scroll on my phone um like specifically the time when I wake up I always wake up before Adriana so like when I wake up before her and like she's still sleeping um next to me so it's like we still have like that connection like mm -hmm. she's still there um but I'm having like my alone time yeah like in the presence of someone yeah. who is like warm and like yeah. I feel safe yeah so like I can just sit there and I can like read whatever I want to read um I can like feel fill up my world with things that like bring me energy and joy so mm. something that I've been doing that is like trying to use social media because I think social media can be like a bitch and mm -hmm. like really awful for self-love mm -hmm. but it also can be really amazing like in the ways in which I see this webcast growing or like yeah. being a thing where folks can like reflect and kind of pick up on the tools that are useful for them there's also like some neat insta accounts so mm -hmm. like I'll go through and like scroll at and like look at or Pinterest is like my shit I love to look at Pinterest and just like mm -hmm. scroll through and see things um and trying to create the world that I want to live in yeah like through art and through the images that I am like choosing to surround myself with but also like within the comfort of like my safety mm -hmm. net mm -hmm. um I think is so important like how am I using the tools yeah around me um in a way that's like actually helpful mm -hmm. for me and then trying to bring other people into that too yeah. so like you talked about like the importance of affirming other people mm -hmm. around you and making sure that like they know that they're doing amazing things and like through the affirmation of other people like i think too like you're affirming yourself because mm -hmm. like you yeah. have to be confident and you mm -hmm. have to be like trusting in yourself mm -hmm. in order to affirm someone else mm -hmm. um like i truly believe that because you're saying like to authentically affirm mm -hmm. when I say oh that. yeah like an authentic affirmation mm -hmm. like an authentic like you look really good and not like a snarky like oh my god she looks better than me like what am no I gonna yeah do? It's like no it's an authentic like you mm -hmm. are trusting yourself mm -hmm. and you're like in touch with yourself yeah um and I think about like pleasure activisms and the books too that talk about like being in touch with just how your body moves mm -hmm. like how are we like engaging in practices that allow us to really like like, how do I know how I move? Like, mm -hmm. how am I touching myself in the ways that, like, I know I want to be touched? Mm -hmm. um, and allowing for that to happen yeah. and creating space for that to happen because mm -hmm. it's so taboo. It's so taboo. Like, what? Why? Yeah. Like, we're self-loving. Yeah. And I think <laughs> I really like how you touched on, like, how do I do this? I don't know what to do, kind of. Mm -hmm. And I think like confidence has to do with it but s I think self-love has an aspect of privilege that we don't talk mm. about so like I have a lot of privilege in getting to the point where I am today because the world doesn't hate me mm. the world hates black people mm -hmm. and, s and specifically the world hates black women mm. and so I am not a black woman and so mm -hmm. I have the privilege in not being hated by the world mm. and I think yeah. that's an aspect that doesn't get talked about a mm -hmm. lot and I think it's something that I will never ever go through yeah and so it's I think it's really hard for mm -hmm. black femmes to also find this love and because mm -hmm. it's but I think about also too. like find the time to like engage yeah. and practice to like then like figure out what you need yeah for your personal mm -hmm. self-love and 
that comes up a lot to me, like, as I reflect on the episodes and, like, even, like, being able to sit here, like, we are so lucky and so privileged to have the time to be mm -hmm. doing this. Like, mm -hmm. there are folks out there working, like, two, three, four, five jobs, like, supporting their children, like, supporting their families, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. Like, you don't, some people feel like they don't have the time to self-love. Mm -hmm. And, like, how, like, that's real. Like, mm -hmm. that is so real. Because mm -hmm. it takes time. Mm -hmm. Like, some people don't get the luxury to get up 30 minutes before their partner and just, like, scroll around. Yeah. Like, maybe that 30 minutes you're up before your partner, you're, like, cooking a meal for them before mm -hmm. you have to go to work. Yeah. Um, even if it is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's rough, too. Um, and, like, how then can we potentially find intentional ways like in our work yeah. to ground ourselves in self-love how and like how do we like this may not be okay but like yeah. how are we taking the time that we're like getting paid for like mm -hmm. on the clock to like do 60 seconds of meditation yeah to do like a couple minutes of journaling mm -hmm. or like whatever to center ourselves in that space so we're in a good head space so like we're feeling like we can self-love or like that we have had like x amount of time to self-love to then show up better yeah in the work that we're doing yeah i don't know how we could do that because i don't think i've ever done my like self-love practice with other people mm. And, like, being on shift, like, you're with another person or, mm -hmm. like, I don't, I think that, but that's to start those conversations about self-love. Mm -hmm. um, because the way that I do my practice with myself is very solitary. Mm -hmm. And but that's, like, how I, I mm -hmm. love that. I love being by myself and just hanging out and yeah. looking at myself. And, but I think that would be really interesting to have a conversation around like as a staff mm -hmm. because I don't think that as a whole we're doing really well on that yeah. aspect and if we're trying as a staff at the Women's Gender Center trying to make change and create community care mm -hmm. we can't create community care if our own little internal community doesn't love you like each other or we, mm -hmm. we love each other but love ourselves yeah and so that in order to love others and build community with others, you need to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. And like that's something that I've been saying for a few years now. It was like, you can't do any of these big ideas and social justice and whatever, la la la, mm -hmm. until you love yourself. And so, yeah. and that's different for each person. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't even know how to yeah. answer yeah. that question. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know. And I guess like my thought process was like, what does it look like to just, take the first 10 minutes when you walk into a shift or mm -hmm. not 10 minutes 10 seconds even 60 seconds mm -hmm. like whatever to just sit and like breathe yeah or like sit and like what we're doing at the center like journal mm -hmm. for your first couple of minutes on shift like how are we just being intentional mm -hmm. about the ways in which we're showing up and i think that can be done like both in community but it also can be done like alone yeah like because oh. we're as much as it sucks, like a lot of the work that we do still is alone. Mm -hmm. Like we work in a place that focuses on community, but when I'm sitting down to check my email, like nobody's <laughs> scrolling through it with me. <laughs> like I'm scrolling through that on yeah. my own. So like, how am I like taking that time as like mm -hmm. a breathing practice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's changing the mentality. Mm -hmm. Like you, as a community, we have to start thinking about the ways that we're nourishing ourselves, not physically, but mentally. Like things like, how am I thinking of myself today? I mm -hmm. think about that every day. Like, how do you see Sienna today? And sometimes it is complete shit. Like, sometimes I'm looking at myself and I'm like, you are awful, like you feel gross, and that shows up into my work. Mm -hmm. And then I don't feel as successful in work or in my classes. Yeah. And so it, I think it has to come from an internal mental shift in order to think how am I talking to myself today because mm -hmm. if you're talking badly to yourself your work is gonna end up badly or your relationships yeah. are gonna end up bad because of how you think of yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
We should get a neurologist we, in, yeah. in here and be like, yo, like, what's up with our what brain? What is going on? <laughs> what parts are firing off? Like, <laughs> right, what's, what's going on what in here? Happening? Like, and it's just, it's such a vast conversation to mm -hmm. be had. And I think, like you said at the beginning, everybody is practicing in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, that even more adds so many different layers. And then, right. like, how do we practice self-love? at work do we have the potential to do that at work do we have time outside of work what mm -hmm. are we doing self-love like with community yeah um there's just so many questions and layers that like could be unpacked that we definitely can't get to like mm -hmm. today or in one yeah. episode but um, i have a lasting question for you then oh so after our conversation today mm -hmm. how do you think you are going to start your self-love practice yeah this is weird this is weird because I didn't know that this was going to be our topic, but last week before I left, um, yeah. I took back my All About Love by mm. Bell Hooks. Everybody read it. Everybody read it. Um, and I want to reread that book. Yeah. So, like, when I first started reading All About Love by Bell Hooks two summers ago, I think was the first time I read it, it was amazing. And, mm. like, I was in such a good, like, self-love, self-care practice after reading that book because I felt like I took the time to get in touch with myself again. Mm. Like I carved out intentional time where I was just connecting like yeah. with me. And so that's where I plan to start. Like I have mm. that book, it's in my backpack. That was gonna be like my last thing to say. So the fact that you asked really? me that's so weird. Yeah. <gasps> um, so like <laughs> that's what I plan to do is like reconnect yeah. with that book and also look back at the notes that I wrote. So like reconnect with old Tamara because like where I was then I know I'm like light years away from yeah. that me but also I know that that me had a lot of wisdom and knowledge mm -hmm. that I could probably learn from again mm -hmm. so that's the next great. one I think I think for now because I'm I think I like to say that I'm doing really good on my self-love practice um but I've kind of lost out of touch with it just because I've been having some super late nights on campus. Mm. Um, but I need to start like cooking for myself again. Mm. Like that's sometimes there's just so much time or not enough time in the day, mm -hmm. which I don't like. So I need to start making time for myself yeah. again. I think that's my next step. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You can cook me something too while you're at it. Oh, I don't know if you <laughs> like my <laughs> cooking. <laughs> I'll eat it. <laughs> no oh. problem. Okay. Well, thanks for having that conversation with me. Yeah, thanks for chatting with me. Yeah. I would just like to say I'm going broke, but that this, like, I feel so lucky to be in this space oh. with you. And, like, World Skin has been holding down the <laughs> fucking fort. <laughs> because, as you could see, like, I have been popping in and out, and Sienna has been, like, my pillar oh. and like our pillar of like making sure that we're continually here mm -hmm. and continuing getting shit done and so like we wouldn't be on to i'm gonna say like next term is season two so like we wouldn't be on to season two whoa is it season two <laughs> uh, <laughs> without you and so mm -hmm. thank you thank you so much well you know i look up to you a lot right i look up to you yeah, you're one of my biggest role models. Mm. I tell people that all the time. And I think a lot of the work that I do is because I want to make you proud and I want to make Aya proud. And I, I'm i excited to see where this goes and I'm mm -hmm. excited to learn more from you. I'm excited to learn more from you yeah. and share space with you. Me too. And like, just grow, like I'm yeah. growing. Yeah, I've grown a lot through this episode and I'm so excited for this season because mm -hmm. I think we got some cool people lined up and I'm excited for the conversations we're gonna have. Mm -hmm. But if you liked this episode and you have something that you want us to cover and talk about, hit us up on Instagram and add us at hashtag ask Aya at Aya underscore OSU. Woo. Thank you. Thank you.